So you're thinking about moving to the Boise, Idaho area, and you have heard a lot of great things about it and its surrounding valley. You get it. People are flocking to Boise, and they're doing so for so, so many reasons. But well, no place is a utopia, right? What about the ugly side of Boise? What are residents, both longtime locals and new Idahoans, complaining about right now? So in today's video, that's what we're going to be talking about. Let's do this. Great. Okay, so between 2020 and 2024, the population of Boise's Treasure Valley went from 750,000 to an incredible 900,000. That represents a 20% growth over just four short years. And yep, that growth made our area one of the fastest growing urban areas across the country. And you might assume that this growth means that, well, that everyone who lives here loves it. But the truth is, well, not everyone does. So before you pack up and make that life-changing decision to move here, let's talk about the unpleasant things about living in Boise. Now, because of the incredible growth we saw and we're still currently experiencing, many residents complain that we're now suffering from overcrowding, which is effectively transforming our city. In fact, longtime locals often reminisce about back when our roads were less congested and our neighborhoods weren't all seemingly just exploding with new construction. Every time you turn around, it's almost like a new development is popping up. It can sometimes feel a little bit like whack-a-mole. One, one 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 Additionally, many residents complain that their commute time is now longer than it used to be. And well, there's no denying it, traffic is much worse. Public spaces are now way more crowded than they used to be, and some worry that we're increasingly losing that open, more relaxed atmosphere that Boise was once so well regarded as offering its residents. And for many, this overcrowding can certainly feel somewhat overwhelming, especially with what seems to be almost constant road construction that's of course being done to improve our infrastructure so that it can handle all the people who are moving here. Across the board, public amenities are also being expanded just to keep up. But well, a number of the current projects really should have been initiated five years ago. So we are currently playing a bit of a game of catch up and well, we're way behind. So that means that we are quite literally living in a construction zone and that can make it more challenging to get around at times. And well, there are some places that are currently just kind of a big mess. Now, when it comes to our traffic, this is an interesting one because from the perspective of many longtime locals, drivers are increasingly getting more aggressive on our roads. That said, from those relocating here from other states such as California, Arizona, and New Mexico, well, those people very often comment to us just how polite and civilized our roads, or rather our drivers, are to each other, especially in comparison to the states they're fleeing from. Now, for me, and I've lived here for almost 20 years now, so I have seen a lot of growth since we first moved. I personally don't feel like we've seen a huge uptick in road rage or driver aggression. That said, are there more fender benders and traffic accidents? Yes, of course. And have I been known to roll my eyes a bit watching people continue to fail miserably at figuring out how to handle all of the, well, just the sea of roundabouts we have now across the valley. Well, yes, but well, this one really comes down to the numbers, right? There are now 20% more drivers out there than there were four years ago. And then add to it the constant and seemingly endless construction we have going on. Well, it's a bit of a mess. But in the same vein, it is what it is, right? But because so many residents are now talking about this a lot, I just wanted to bring it up here. From what I can gather specifically about this topic, your take on it is going to be 100% dependent on where you're coming from and therefore what you are comparing it to. So I grew up on a ranch in Eastern Oregon where we had one, yes, just one stoplight in the whole county. But now we help clients every single day here in Ada County and Canyon County relocate from places all over. Just last week, we had clients here from Southern California, where the way they describe it, driving on their freeways sounds to be a bit like starring in an action movie where you're always running late, dodging speeding stunt cars, and yep, the plot just never really makes sense. One minute you're crawling at five miles per hour, bonding with the guy in tacos in the next lane, and the next you're in a high-speed race with a Prius that apparently thinks it's a Ferrari. Blinkers, rare, lane changes, sudden, and just when you think you have figured it all out, bam, there is an unexplainable traffic jam at 2 a.m. Anyhow, sounds to be pretty much like Mad Max greets 
Groundhog Day, but with palm trees and radio static, I guess. Anyhow, I digress. My point is that obviously where you're coming from and so what you're going to be comparing it to is going to undoubtedly impact your take on this. Now, as the Boise metro area has continued to grow, the city and its surrounding suburbs have had to expand outward, which is that urban sprawl that you'll often hear people talk about. And this is one of the main reasons why when you live here, you are going to need a car, which is something that people moving here from bigger cities often are not used to. Now, yes, we do have a public transportation system, but we definitely do not have the subways and train systems that many really big cities have. And well, this is something that many, I would even say most longtime locals really do not want to see have happen here or rather added to Boise's Valley. So for now, just know you are going to need a car to get around. Now, when people are interested in moving to the Boise area, they are often surprised to learn just how big the Boise metro area is and how many suburbs there are. But just because it's big doesn't mean you can build more just anywhere. In fact, several of our cities, Boise included, really don't have that much land left to develop, which is exactly why the expansion just keeps getting farther and farther out, where where there's more land. Now, while this does address the housing issue to a degree, it can also create some other challenges. Our urban sprawl, overcrowding, and influx of new residents have all contributed to one of Boise's most pressing issues, and that is increasing home prices. Now, this really began back in 2018-ish and then just completely exploded through 2020 and 2022. And while that time period, so let's just call it the COVID market, during that time, home prices across the country increased. And being that Boise's Treasure Valley was one of the number one places people were moving to, the spike we saw in home prices happened incredibly quickly. We saw demand spike while our inventory, so the total number of homes available on the market for buyers to choose from, that stayed historically low. And then to top it all off, add the historically low interest rates we saw. Those three factors truly work together to create the perfect storm for home prices. And well, we saw them go through the roof. Now, this has been, and still is to this day, a bit shocking to experience and see, as Boise was always known as being a very informed affordable, a very affordable city to live. But well, that has really changed. And home prices have also been a contributing factor to that urban sprawl because the homes located in nearby cities that are just a little bit further out, they can also be a little bit more affordable. And for some, this has been a great option because these homes are also more often than not brand new. Now, my one caveat to buyers who really get starry eyed and just very excited over new construction is to make sure you do your research as to where you'll be living and where you'll be working and if that is going to be an acceptable commute for you. Now, when it comes to your overall commute, something that I see as a positive here in the Boise area is that we really now have multiple different employment corridors and sections. Contrary to popular belief, not every major job or well-paid position is located right in the downtown Boise area. Instead, there are really great opportunities across so many of the Valley suburbs, from Micron and Albertsons in Boise, to Amazon out in Nampa, to Sensi and Blue Cross of Idaho in Meridian, to Beta being built out in CUNA, to Pet IQ in Eagle, to JR Simplot in Caldwell. You get the gist. But then there's also, of course, all of the other tech companies, startups, and hospitals scattered across the valley. So that will very likely open up a lot of different housing options for you. And also will mean you most likely will not have to drive for an hour or even really a half an hour to get to work. Good, because... <laughs> And this is unlike many other cities across the nation in that if you move to the outskirts of town in some of those cities, and if practically everyone works in the same main location, so downtown or in one little employment corridor, well, those commutes can be quite long and frankly, would not be for me. <laughs> Thankfully, that is not how things happen here in the Boise area. However, it will come down to where you work and where you wanna live. But the good news is that you will have options. But none of this removes the fact that the cost of living here in the Boise area has gone up significantly, and not just for housing. Currently, the overall cost of living in Boise is now 4% higher than the national average. So that's certainly worth noting. I should also add here that there are suburbs in Boise's metro area that still have a relatively, compared to the national level anyhow, a relatively low cost of living, such as CUNA, Nampa, and STAR. One piece of 
good news based on all the conversations my team and I have been having recently with people who are moving here from states such as, of course, California, but also Arizona, Washington, Oregon, and Colorado, is how much more affordable they find our groceries to be, as well as our utilities, property taxes, insurance, and really just all that jazz. So this is another topic that your perspective and take on it is going to be directly related to where you're coming from and therefore what you're comparing it to. Now, something that people really do not like when they live in Boise and something that we get asked about a lot, especially this past summer, is in regard to wildfire smoke and its impact on our air quality. During the summer and fall months, our air quality occasionally goes down due to wildfire smoke drifting in from surrounding areas like Oregon, California, and Washington, and well, of course, parts of Idaho. I, I guess I can't blame everything on our neighboring states, can I? Are you sure about that? <laughs> While we don't see this happen every single year, well, we sure had a rough time with it this past summer. Our air quality here was pretty poor for about a month this year, which was less than ideal for all of us, but really difficult for those with pre-existing health and respiratory issues. I should note that the wildfires we saw this past summer and the diminished air quality that they brought about, well, that was definitely not quote unquote normal or even close to what we typically see and experience living here in Boise and its surrounding Treasure Valley. In fact, I think this past year was probably the worst I've ever seen it. And not only have we lived here for almost 20 years now, we also grew up traveling back and forth to the area quite a lot. So thankfully, it is not a typical standard occurrence. But if and when it happens, it's pretty gross. And also just kind of depressing. I cannot tell you how happy we were once the skies cleared up and we could see the mountains and buttes again. <laughs> Look at that view, Willis. Now, something that has become a bigger problem here in the Boise area that you need to know about is that with all the growth we've seen, we've also seen an uptick in our crime rate. We are seeing more drug use and drug busts, increased property crime and theft, and even a little bit more violent crime. Last year, the city of Boise reported higher rates of violent crime compared to previous years, which is unfortunately reflective of national trends. Now, how much of this you will see will depend on where you are. I can tell you for me personally, I certainly do not see this on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis, but it is here. And just like everywhere else, there are areas where we're seeing more of it than in others, but it is not something that is happening everywhere across the Treasure Valley, thank heavens. Just please make sure that you do your homework and check the crime statistics, because obviously all of this is very important to wrap your head around prior to making a decision on where to buy. Now, if you're a family moving here, you are, of course, going to want to know about our schools. And if you go to Google and start researching Idaho education, well, you're going to see that Idaho schools are ranked 39 out of 51, which will likely give you pause as a parent. I know that is not what any parent with school age kiddos wants to see. I certainly know that if I was contemplating moving here from another state and saw that, well, it certainly won't exactly thrill me, but here's what I can tell you as a parent of kids who are in school here. First off, we are very lucky to have school choice. What that essentially means is that we as parents are allowed to pick the school that we feel is the right fit for our kids. Yes, we do have school zones, so there is a zoning system that basically assigns certain areas and communities and neighborhoods to certain public schools, but we also have an in-district transfer system, which will allow us, assuming there's room in the school we want our child to attend, to have our kids transferred to our chosen school. And while yes, there is the possibility that the school you want your kids to attend is over capacity. But well, as of today, the vast majority of schools here across the Treasure Valley are widely and routinely accepting in-district transfers. The second thing I will point out about this one is that we also have a number of great charter, magnet, and private schools for families to consider. So you definitely have more options than just public school. And then you have some public schools that are schools of choice, which means they don't have any boundaries and their curriculum is typically a little different from what the other public schools are teaching and then oftentimes the way in which they handle things and disciplinary actions vary as well within the school so although that overall ranking certainly doesn't look great and well isn't a major selling point for the state of idaho we do still have some amazing schools here across the treasure valley where kids are getting a great education and for whatever it's worth i just want to throw this in here my two boys are and have have been since their preschool years attending public schools and we have been nothing but happy 
with the quality of education they're getting. And then of course, there are also some great options for those who've made the decision to homeschool their kids. So yeah, hooray for having options, right? Now, another topic that we're asked about a lot is in regard to mosquitoes, flies, and other pests. With the biggest, most commonly asked pest being the mosquito. And well, with all of the various bodies of water across Boise's Treasure Valley, which is also something that often surprises people to find, with all of our lakes, creeks, canals, ponds, and of course the Boise River, we definitely do have mosquitoes here. And they tend to be most prevalent in late spring through early fall, and particularly in areas with standing water. Thankfully, across both Ada and Canyon County, which are the two counties that make up the vast majority of our valley, mosquito abatement is handled at both the city level, which you can see if you look into your property taxes and how your levy rate is broken down, and then if necessary, additionally at the community level. So for communities with multiple lakes and ponds or that are right by the river or right by the creek or a lake, they will most likely have additional mosquito abatement plans in place and just wrapped into the HOA. So just know that yes, mosquitoes are here, but are there multiple efforts in place to abate and manage it or rather them? Yes. Oh, thank heavens. And then some people have also asked us about flies. And while, yes, we, like the vast majority of the rest of the country, have flies, in general, they are nowhere near as big of an issue as, for some reason, people tend to think that they're going to be. That said, if you decide to buy a property that's next to, say, an equestrian property, or maybe a small hobby farm, or even buy a dairy farm, which I would definitely not advise, but to each their own, if you decide to buy a home in one of the, those kind of areas, you will likely see more flies than say, someone who's living closer to the more metropolitan urban area. And then what about rodents such as mice and rats? With the huge amount of growth, we have seen a lot of new communities that are built out in sort of the urban sprawl area. Well, they were built out over fields. So in some of those communities, they sometimes might see mice for about a year or two, just really until the mice relocate further out. Tougher on the mice really than the homeowners. <laughs> and then thank heavens, we do not have widespread problems with rats. Like they apparently do in a number of cities, people are flocking here from, such as LA and San Francisco, which, well, that would not be something I would personally enjoy. So thank heavens for that. And then last, what kind of wildlife do we have right here in Boise's Treasure Valley? Living here will mean you'll most likely see a diverse array of wildlife due to our varied landscapes, including foothills, rivers, and of course, the agricultural areas and fields. Common sightings include deer, particularly mule deer, which can often be seen grazing in open fields or wandering into residential areas. Coyotes are also more prevalent than many initially anticipate, and they can typically be heard howling at night or spotted out in the more rural parts of the valley. And for all of you bird watchers out there, well, we've got bald eagles, red-tailed hawks, and just various kinds of waterfowl that can be found near our lakes, rivers, and streams. And then Boise is also home to many smaller mammals like rabbits, squirrels, and fox. While the nearby Boise River attracts a wide range of aquatic life, including, is it aquatic or aquatic? Aquatic. Aquatic. Anyhow, including a range of fish such as trout and bass. Additionally, residents may occasionally encounter rattlesnakes in the foothills or along our trails. So it is, of course, essential to be cautious while exploring. So if after all of this, if you're still thinking about moving to Boise or to any of its surrounding suburbs, then you need to watch this video. Or if you would like to download our completely free, no strings attached relocation guide, we will put a link to it in the description for you to download and just peruse through at your leisure. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you have a great rest of your day.